an age of 21st century and an information war, an info war, it's not all about nuclear weapons and military weapons. It, in large part, you begin to think about uh, things like uh, tech, technological backdoors, things like we were talking about before, big data, psychological warfare, psychometric warfare, psychographical warfare. And in fact, just in the last few days, I ran into this, uh, there's an, actually it was a, an, a, a certain division of uh, the IDF operations directorate uh, that's actually is titled the Center for Consciousness Operations. Uh, and it's, so that not that interesting? We talk about psyops. So if it's consciousness operation, we could talk about con ops. And isn't that a perfect way of thinking about some of these uh, uh, ways that the social media landscape is 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 creating a new man or new woman in a certain way? And I, I brought up this idea of uh, psychological warfare. Uh, psychographical warfare and psychometric warfare, and in a certain way, this the the idea of the different deep states and uh, Israel off, obviously would have what you might term the uh, the deep Jewish state uh, component to it. They they are very much interested in in the idea of rhetorical warfare and thinking back into Aristotle's uh, version of rhetoric. And these three uh, normally conceived categories of logos, uh, ethos, and pathos, where logos is the idea of the power of the word and the power of logic. And of course, that's where we get psychological warfare and warfare that's sort of coming down from on high, that's scripted, that has a certain type of language or logic to it. Uh, sometimes it's based on the truth and it's facts that are skewed in a certain way. You would call that gray propaganda. But sometimes it's a logic that's uh, either illogical or that it's based on false grammar, if you're thinking about the trivium, a false factual uh, 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 set that, you, that would be called black propaganda. But then you also have ethos, the second category of rhetoric that is, uh, is not necessarily related to our idea of ethics, although in a certain way I do think it comes out of uh, that. But ethos in the ancient Greek tradition in terms of a, a speaker's effectiveness or ability to reach an audience had to do with their uh, connection, their understanding of the culture or the, the society or the, uh, the understanding of the audience the ethos of the audience and their ability to express that, also their background, whether they had cred in, in modern parlance, whether they had street cred. And in a certain way, you could then uh, put that into the idea of psychographical warfare, which I previously described as sort of an emanation of something like social media, Facebook. So this, it's your social, uh, it's your, uh, your psychosocial graph which is uh, your, your community, how you like to be seen by uh, the people that you relate with. And this, of course, relates to what we were talking about before in terms of n new groupings, new alternative alt-right uh, uh, ways of conceiving a political group that represents an a new approach to a problem, reaction, and solution, or certain left ideologies where you, whether it's something like, of course, like uh, identity politics, is a good example of where people uh, want to consider the way that they're looked at. The virtue signaling, that whole idea, I think, is plays into the idea of psychographical warfare. But then third and finally, there's the, the, the rhetorical category of pathos, the idea of the emotion, the appeal to emotions, uh, and the idea of, of, of what tri triggers you. I, that's, that'd probably be the modern word, triggering, right? And uh, so then I believe that that's related to psychometric warfare. Uh, 
And so something looping back to uh, Cambridge Analytica that, that claims that it has thousands of data points, uh, a lot of it based on, on using all kinds of data points uh, illegally, apparently, too, or against uh, the rules in terms of uh, Amazon Web Services, uh, apparently, but also across Facebook and the massive corporate commercialized data points that have been developed by, by Facebook on their, on their user base. Uh, you could then see that, that, that something like Cambridge Analytica has thousands of data points that not only relate to whose, whose posts are you sharing, and this of course is related to the whole idea of the accusations of fake news and what is credible and stories that get passed along and dark posts, posts that don't get recognized and, uh, and that type of thing, but then also psycho, uh, psychometrical warfare where you're where they have data points about what you're specifically interested in or what triggers you or what sets you off and of course facebook then intro introduced the things beyond just the sort of thumbs up like they begin to introduce a little bit wider range of emotional uh you know faces to for you to then click that would then give them data that ultimately is, is apparently ended up in a large scale uh, uh, con, con ops consciousness operations warfare uh, outfit like uh, like Cambridge Analytica where they have data points on the specific things that can trigger you in certain ways and so I would call that the the emanation of psychometrical warfare of some point that it's based on the metrics that that you've provided for yourself and then just finally I would add that there's a fourth category of rhetoric that's usually forgotten about and it's called kairos which is the it's an actually uh, it's a different type of time uh, time uh, linear time or metrical time is considered in 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 Greek philosophy as chronos but kairos is the idea of context or the moment and, and the, li the literal definitions of it are very interesting and people should go look it up. It has something to do like the, the moment where you have a chance to push it on through. So I would say that this fourth category of rhetoric opens up possibilities for us where we understand our context uh, both in terms of uh, history, but also in terms of so social context, where there are possibilities that maybe we didn't uh, think of before and that are outside of these sort of these three well-worn, well-warfared uh, categories of logos, ethos, and pathos, and, th and looking for these, uh, these openings for, uh, for actions that maybe have not been considered before. And of course, this is also the idea of the realm of improvisation. Uh, and, and, and in the ancient rhetorical arts, really that was why you studied and set up, a, set up memory palaces or so you could know your arguments and you could, you could know all of your grammar, logic, and, and rhetorical devices. But then the best re rhetoricians were those that recognize opportunities in the moment, like the best uh, jazz musician or uh, even classical musician who was riffing on a certain mode. Tip a little bit of tattoo, and